let me uh, just start off by saying thank you to um, one of our TKO board members, uh, Steve Coonan, is also CEO of the Atlanta Hawks. And um, I would like to thank him and the entire team here at State Farm Arena because they did a phenomenal job for us. Um, and they're incredible partners. This was, as I said earlier tonight, we had a little over 16,000 people here, um, our 60th sellout, and um, the largest gate um, in domestic history for WWE. So that's um, quite a night for us. And for me personally, it was quite a night. You know, as I, I, I mentioned it earlier, living here in the early 90s and sort of being a part of WCW, being at Center Stage Theater, uh, doing TV and, and just having that experience to where we are now, uh, being here, the hottest ticket in Atlanta, and just uh, doing the business we're doing is incredible. So it, it was a great night for everybody, but especially for me here. Um, also want to thank Metro Boomin. And yes, I know who he is. Um, you know, he, maybe thought I didn't. I don't know. Um, also, I just I just want to thank all the artists who came here tonight. You know, there was a, there was a lot of athletes here tonight. There was a lot of legends here tonight. But um, the hip hop community and the music community, just a lot of support, a lot of fans, really getting engaged in what we do, and it's it's wonderful to see that engagement. Um, to see how passionate they are through their life of growing up with WWE um, and now still you know, being a part of it here and to hear them talk about how excited they are um, with the product and, and where things are going and their favorite superstars. Um, and what's really cool about it, there's just so many of them right now, I feel like we could have the coolest hip hop battle royal in history. Um, and they're all uh, wanting to do it, I think, so. Um, you know, they're all interested in coming to the Performance Center and, and all of it. And so it's um, just an amazing time in our business and um, fortunate to be a part of it. And a lot of hard work, but we're excited with where things are going. So um, I thought we had an amazing night tonight. I thought that, um, let me start with the Hell in a Cell match. Drew McIntyre and CM Punk just put on a classic and a clinic and did it in a way that um, <clears throat> sort of what that is supposed to be. It's what Hell in a Cell is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the end of a, when, not, when, when you cannot take each other any further, when, when the point of conflict has gotten to where it has no place else to go, you put it in Hell in a Cell and you guys finish it there. In, and, and it, you know, when I look at that match, that that's what they did. It wasn't about uh, jumping off something really high. It wasn't about um, just crazy stuff. It's just about two guys with an emotional hatred for each other that surpassed everything else we could do in this business. So there's only one way to solve it, and that is hell in a cell. And it's what it's supposed to be. Um, and they delivered a classic, all-time classic. Um, Happy for both of them, um, though I'm sure it will be a, a long couple of days as they are uh, recovering from what they went through. They put their bodies on the line for us all tonight, and um, I'm thankful for them for that. Um, Nia and Bailey, great match. Priest Finn, incredible match. Rhea Liv, incredible match. Return of Raquel Gonzalez. Um, Dominic Mysterio, afraid of heights. <laughs> uh, probably more afraid of heights now, um, probably also afraid of kendo sticks and <laughs> potentially afraid of pinatas because that is pretty much what he seemed like. Uh, short of candy falling out of him, um, he was a human pinata. Um, and then Roman and Cody and the bloodline I thought was just an epic, uh, epic storytelling and, and again that, that continues to roll through the, the original tribal chief coming back, not really changing who he is, but having to survive with Cody Rhodes to get to the other side of this place. I thought we just, um, oh my God, you okay? <laughs> um, I just thought it was a classic, the return of Jimmy Uso, amazing. And then The Rock 
showing up, um, which you have to be the biggest star in the world to be able to hit your music, walk out, blow the roof off the place, and I'm out. And, um, and it's epic, and it was. And um, you know, thankful to him with everything he's got going on in his career and his life, um, to never have looked away from what brought him to the dance and what his roots are. It's in his DNA, it's in his blood, it's, it's who he is. And any time that we're in a place that he can take 30 seconds out of his incredible schedule to come back and feel that electricity um, that you can only get at WWE, he does it and I'm thrilled for that and thankful to him for that. So, um, big things coming up, as I mentioned tonight, Crown Jewel, Crown Jewel Championships, both for men and women. Um, that will be an annual event that will be, I think, at another level. Survivor Series War Games on December 30th coming up just around the corner. And then we talked about the return of a classic tonight, but talk about return of old school classic Saturday night's main event, December 14th. So big things coming. Netflix just around the corner on January 6th. So as crazy and wild and hot as things are right now, I only expect it to get better. So I'll turn it over to you guys. First question uh, in the second row to your on the right side, Paul. Uh, TJ Legacy, uh, Soapbox Running the Ropes. Hey, there's, there's been some reports uh, that are leading up to Bad Blood regarding the representation of black male wrestlers within WWE. They haven't been on a PLE in the last three cards. There was no black male wrestlers on the Bad Blood card. Um, how do you gauge between making sure that there is representation and making sure that there are wrestlers that get opportunities that are deserved? I see everybody gets the opportunity. Like if, if I don't see the difference in anybody. I don't see the color, I don't see the nationality, I don't see any of it, I see talent. I don't see the difference between men and women. I see talent. We tell stories with those talent, how they can handle that, those stories and how they can represent those stories and how we can bring those stories forward. So, um, you know, I don't keep track of any of that. I do what's relevant and what is best, in the, the best in storytelling and what's being delivered the best, and then that's what goes. No different than, you know, the men and the women who main events, whatever, what, whatever the biggest stories are. That's where we go. Next question here on the left third row. Hey Paul, Raj Prashad from Oprah Sports. Hey man. Atlanta always loves seeing Goldberg. See him get in the ring tonight. He's talked about having one more match. Is a WWE ring or somewhere we might be able to see him maybe have that one more match? Yeah, I can tell you. So, you know, as you said, Atlanta loves Bill Goldberg and that's why we, you know, he was here tonight, right? Um, he was with his wife and his son. Um, always gonna get a huge reaction here, enjoying the show. You know, things get said. I can tell you that when Bill came back, um, he was not too happy with uh, Gunther. And um, we'll see. We'll see. You know, the further you go, time catches up with all of us, right? And so the further you go, those talks get further and further away from reality. Um, but I don't know. I saw Bill earlier in the day, um, and it was great. And I saw Bill later in the day, and there was a different look on his face with a spark in his eyes. So um, I would say never say never. Next question for our corner. Hey, Hunter, congratulations on another successful, successful event, Armand Sadler by Magazine. You talked about putting out the best talent, but you also do what's best for business. We know TKO super hot right now, stock price is at $128. What's it feel like to be in the midst of such a hot period for WWE and UFC and TKO, and what are you looking to do to continue and elevate that? Um, yeah, no, I'm excited. One, as I mentioned before, I think we're in a really great period right now. Or with talent, you know, it's almost um, sometimes when we are going through stuff and looking at our internal rosters, like this embarrassment of riches of, like, wow, there's just so many talented people that have so much to offer. You almost run out of things to do with people because there's only so much real estate within a show to put them on. Um, and, you know, then I also look at our partners in TKO and I see, you know, what Dane is doing and they're just crushing it and I see stuff in the sphere and, uh, you know, I look at that production and I'm like, I wouldn't do that, you know. <laughs> um, it's just like a lot of fun. 
uh, man, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch them do what they do at the level they do it, and there's nothing like them in the world. And I think for me to be in this right now, to have the partners that we have, to have the talent that we have, and the product that we're able to put out, and the reaction of fans around the world, um, there's there's nothing like what we do. When you put that together, I, I don't. It's unstoppable, and uh, I'm I'm thrilled to be a cog in that wheel. Next question for Brooke here on the left, Paul. Denise Salcedo, Instinct Culture, good to see you. Um, in regards to Monday Night Raw on October 7th, it's starting to move over for two hours for the remainder of the year. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, obviously, as head of creative, how that sort of impacts your workflow and all of that. And additionally, how does that look like for Netflix once Raw moves over? What is the duration of Netflix on Raw Netflix going to be? When I find that out, I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you know, we're just in this moment where, where Raw goes down to two hours. What does that do for us? It's an hour less show, right? Um, we, we found ourselves over time of being in this wild spot. If you would have asked me a few years ago, three hours was just, the difference between two and three is just like night and day. Um, this incredibly, like I can't even, express to you how much different that is. And then um, now we're at this place where we're doing three hour shows and all of a sudden it's gonna drop to two and I'm like, like I'm just, it's a different way of looking at it that makes me, um, it's just different. And it's, it's a little bit of a, a stress because it's less, but I think sometimes less is more and I think that's going to be a really good thing. When we get to Netflix, um, we're still working through all that. So I think the truth is, um, you guys will have to watch and see, and I'm gonna wait and see, and, and, um, but we'll deal with it. And, and the truth is, no matter what the length of time is, it's just about putting out the best product we can, telling the best possible stories we can. Because at the end of the day, this is what this is all about, is telling stories. And um, you know, sometimes in our business, we get so caught up in two hour, three hour, one hour, this one hour. Like the movie's the movie. When the movie's over, it was either really good, or it was not good, or it was too long, or too short, whatever it is. But like, we're just making a movie every week, twice a week, three times a week actually, um, with more to come. So it's, I kind of approach it in that manner. Just let's write the best stories, and then we'll try to figure out how to jam it into whatever time slot we have available. Hey Paul, uh, Rick Uccino for Sports Illustrated. Obviously a, a lot of big returns tonight, none bigger uh, than The Rock who came down and it appeared he had a pretty good message, uh, three targets sitting in the ring. Um, you know, he comes and goes as he, as he pleases. When might, might we see The Rock back? And you know, there's a lot of good options for storytelling on board for you as the head of creative there. Yeah, I, th I think the key word there was as he pleases, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, the Rock's The Rock, and he's going to be able to do, I think you saw that last time the final boss was here, that um, whether we were on the air, off the air, um, still rolling cameras, not rolling cameras, he kind of does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Um, that's the cool thing about being the final boss, I think, and he has that, he, he's The Rock, he can do what he wants to do. Um, when you say, for me, like, cool to have that, it, like, Having the rock in your quiver uh, is pretty cool, right? Um, you know, we, we again embarrassment of riches. We have so much stuff, and and you know, when you have a moment like that with the rock, it's wonderful to see. And, and where does it go from here? Kind of can go anywhere, and that's the beauty of it. When we get done tonight, you kind of tell all these epic stories that land you in one place, and then you go, oh yeah, but now what? That's really cool, right? I don't know where it goes. So. That's where we want everybody to be. Last question, front row. Uh, Julian from the Nocturnal. Uh, picking back off uh, Denise's question about Netflix, uh, what is the production going to look like when Raw moves to Netflix? Because Netflix has never done a 52-week show before, and I'm quite interested in seeing what that production flow is going to look like. So here's the cool thing about what we do. Um, slightly different from a lot of other sports. A lot of other sports, um, somebody like Netflix picks them up and then somebody has to produce that content because the other sport doesn't produce the content. 
we're turnkey. Right? We, we do everything we do, and then we just deliver the product. They turn on the signal, we deliver it out. Um, I think it's one of the, the key wonderful things about WWE that not, not everybody is in that place. So while I think Netflix gives us this incredible canvas to paint on, and we are looking to paint a masterpiece like we have never done before when we're on there, but it's us doing it. So um, it's going to be WWE in all its glory. We're just going to turn the volume up a lot. And um, we have the ability to do that with Netflix, I think in a way that maybe we've not really had that opportunity before. And, and certainly to when we do that, hit, you know, hit all of the US with Raw, but then with Raw, with SmackDown, with NXT, and with all the PLEs, hit 80% of the globe starting on January 6th, where we were strong in all those places, and now with Netflix, it just goes to another level. So um, the one thing I can say is, you know, we're, we're working intently on that and, and putting a lot of hard work into it, but I'm, I'm so excited about the opportunity of what that presents for us and where we're going to go with it. So it, wait and see, but it's going to be awesome. Thank you all for coming up. One thing I want to clarify, I guess I said this wrong earlier, I don't know sometimes uh, what, what exactly is, but uh, we were the largest gate for any U.S. arena show in WWE history, so if I said that wrong earlier, I just want to clarify, largest gate here tonight, but 16,000 people at our 60th straight sellout, in case I didn't say that enough times earlier, uh, let me just say it again, so thank you all for being here, um, Thank you for being a part of this and for all your support. And uh, we will see you, or at least um, feed your comments about Crown Jewel when we get there. Thank you very much. Are you jobby now in bed? Do you have dreams of main eventing in the sack? Well, have no fear. Blue Chew is here to help you become the champ. Soon you'll make your baby face come back and get the finish. Blue Chew is the place to go for chewable versions of Sildenafil, Tadalafil, Vardenafil. These ingredients help men achieve stronger, yeah, harder, yeah, and longer lasting erections for sexual activity. Woo! The chewable tablets help fight off all forms of ED, which can include performance anxiety and maintaining an erection long enough for sex. A Blue True subscription includes a free online consultation, 24-7 medical support, a prescription for chewable, sildenafil, tadalafil, vardenafil, if approved, and discreet delivery straight to your door every month, all from the comfort of your own home at affordable prices. No more in-person doctor visits, no more waiting for appointments, and best of all, no more awkwardness. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to the description box of this video and click on the link and make sure to use the promo code DENISE.